Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to have a look at how you can create different join types when you do a relationship in Microsoft Access. So I've got a, a simple database on the screen with three tables and a form which is not relevant for what we're going to do in this session, but let's just have a look at the tables. If I just open consultants, it's just a list of consultants and nothing spectacular about that. And project, list of projects with a consultant ID field there. And sponsor with sponsor ID and that's just it. Now if I go into design on each of these tables, sponsor ID is a primary key. If I go into design on project, project ID is the primary key. I'll close that one. And consultants. The primary key is consultant ID. So they've all got a primary key. Now project, if I go back into that one, uh, it's got the consultant ID field and the sponsor, sponsor ID field as well. So this is like a joining table. So consultants and sponsors are going to come into the project. The project's like the main table. Now I need to do that relationship first of all, and then I'll look at the different join types. So we need to go to database tools. And then it's a case of just dragging these into this window. Um, no, not that window. Click on relationships and drag it into this relationship window. And then expand that. So you can see all the fields. You don't have to expand it, but I always find it easy if you do. Then bring the project table in. Like so. And then the sponsor table as well. So when you create a relationship like this, you can set up the join type at this stage, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it in a query, but let's just see how this works. So one consultant can work on many projects. So consultant ID to consultant ID. So that's a one to many. Let's pick that up. That's what I want. And I want to enforce, enforce referential integrity, which basically means it won't allow you to create a project in this table and add a consultant ID that doesn't already exist in that table, which is a good thing. Sometimes you can't tick this. You can create the link, but it won't let you tick this. That's because there will already be orphan records in this table, which you need to really go and sort out because you do want that to be ticked. It's a good safety thing. It stops um, false data entries and things like that. One to many, that's okay. Click on create. And then you get the one to infinity symbol there. And the same for sponsor ID to sponsor ID. Enforced referential integrity, one to many, and you can see there you've got the join type here, and the three options are listed there. So I'll just go through those three options when I get onto a query, but I'll just cancel that now. Um, create that, that's okay. So now that's the, the links we've got, and you can see it like that. So I always say to people, when you come into access, when you come into this window, this should tell a story straight away. Sometimes you get databases that like a spider's web. Sometimes you can't avoid that. But if you can avoid that, try to keep it nice and neat. So if I save that relationship and just close this window down and go and create myself a query. So I'll do a simple one first off. Query by design. I want consultants and projects. The link already exists, so it shows it in the query. Now, sometimes a lot of people, in fact, and uh, can do this you can just not do the links in the uh, database window where I just did it but just create a link in this window with a query problem with that is that link is just for that query and if you cre create different queries you have to keep creating the link but if you create it at this juncture at the beginning that link is going to be cascading through all the queries that you create and all the forms that you create as well so in my view it's the best thing to do so to show you the join types, if I just double click on consultants and just drag and drop these fields in. In fact, I don't need all these fields. Let's just take all these out. Let's just go. I just want the consultant ID, first name, surname, and then I want the project is on and the location. So that's that's the only fields I want. Now if I if I click on query design and run, that shows me all the projects that he's on. And that's so on, so on, that's okay. 
But what that doesn't show me is if there's any consultants that aren't actually allocated to a project, and it also doesn't show me if there's any projects that haven't got anybody allocated to them. So that's where the join type comes in. So if I go back into design on this, and now if I double click on this line, you've got those same three options that I showed you before. So the one that's the default one is only show rows where join fields are equal, which is what we've just done. Now for tech number two as an option, it says include all records from consultants, but only those that are from project that are equal. So this is going to show me any consultants that are skiving. So I'll click OK to that. You get a little arrow pointing that way. Now if I run this one, you can see that there are two people that aren't actually allocated to a project, which is good. Now if I do that the other way around, go back into it, double click on it, and select number three. What's this going to show us? All records in project and those from consultants um, where the joint fields are equal. So this will tell me if there's a project that hasn't got anybody allocated on it. So if I run that one, I can see that top project there. Look, Afghanistan, there's nobody on it. So two and two, get one of the ones that's available and allocate them to this project. That's how that would work. I'm just going to put this back onto joint type one, which is a default. So you could create that type of join query. You could do each one if you wanted to, or you can just come in and do it like that and run it as and when you want to. It's totally up to you. Most people would probably have one of each so you could see who was available. And then if you allocated somebody to a project, uh, refresh the data, it would show them not available moving forward. So that's just a quick look at join types in Microsoft Access in a query. And you can also do them, as I said at the beginning, in the relationship window. Uh, when you're doing the relationship, if you want to go back into it, you've got the same join types there. So if this, for example, is something you wanted all the time, you would just set that to be number two, show you all the consultants, and it'd give you um, a, a list of the projects that aren't allocated. Just cancel that off there. Cancel that. Come close this. Back to my query. And I'm just going to close that down. So hopefully that was of use for you. If you're not used to doing join types in queries, that's how you do it. Thanks for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.